Hello everybody, good evening and welcome to the United Stands. I'm Mark Goldbridge and Manchester United are no longer playing in Europe and it's not even Christmas. It's an absolute joke. It's an absolute disgrace and we are going to talk about a number of reasons why that is. And accountability has to be top of the agenda. Now, people will fly in with Ten Hag in, Ten Hag out. And I've said this before, I don't live in a world where it's red or green. It's everything in between. Sacking a manager, as I've said before, is not the answer. There are too many problems with Manchester United to just throw them to throw another manager on the bonfire. The structure, the playing squad, the same problems that were there with Jose, Oli, Van Hal, these problems are still there. You sack another manager, we'll be back here in another three years. But we have to also say that you can't just go, Ten Hag in, it's fine. Fuck off. It's not fine. There has to be accountability for this because it is bloody embarrassing for Manchester United to have four points from 15 in a group that's got Copenhagen and Galatasaray in it. We are Manchester United. And there are two big questions that Eric Ten Hag has to answer tonight. Has to answer tonight. Has to answer tonight. Two big questions. One, why the fuck did you get rid of David De Gea for Anana? Why did you get rid of a goalkeeper that has spent the last few years saving us from results like that for a goalkeeper that is costing us results like that? Why did you do that? Why did you get rid of a Golden Glove multiple Player of the Year season goalkeeper who knows how to play in goal for Manchester United like the back of his hand and bring stability experience to that football club? Why did you get rid of that? For Anana. Why did you do that? It makes no sense at all. No sense at all. This would be like Scorsese in his latest film. Binning off DiCaprio and bringing in Shane Ritchie. Look it up. It's a fucking joke. I don't understand it. And on top of that, let's look at the financial. I mean, look, if it was a free transfer, if it was a swap, I still think it's stupid. But let's look at it. Not only do I think De Gea is on a different level to Anana as a Man United goalkeeper. I, th I think Anana is a good goalkeeper, but I think he's out of his depth at Man United. And I predicted this. I said, when you replace a goalkeeper at Man United, I've seen it before with Bosnich and Bartes, Man United goalkeepers get swallowed up. You can come to Man United with the reputation as one of the best goalkeepers in the world. And Anana did. But he has been swallowed up, swallowed up by this job. And we had a goalkeeper that could do it blindfolded. But not only that, we let De Gea go on a free, spent £50 million replacing him. £50 million. What prat at that football club let Ten Hag do that? What prat signs that off? I want to replace De Gea and I want to spend £50 million doing it. Get out of my office, you fucking idiot. Get out. It's not April the 1st. It's not April the 1st. What are you talking about? £50 million. You want me to give you £50 million to replace David De Gea? What robot have you got going in goal? Inspector Gadget? Get out. I can't believe this was sanctioned. And I tell you what, it hasn't just cost us £50 million. It's cost us Champions League football. It's cost us Europa League football. Anana's cost us £100 million. Quid. He's cost us that... that we're shit in the Premier League. I hate saying this because I don't want to individualise it. And I actually don't want to put the blame on Anana. I don't want to put the blame on Anana. I'm putting the blame on the people who signed this deal off. £50 million to replace De Gea and £50 million to go out of Europe. We're out of fucking Europe. You can, you can, you can mock Thursday night football, but it was a way back into the Champions League. Gone. Revenue, gone. No, no midweek money from February, gone. This has cost us about £100 million. £100 million. Anana was a really good goalkeeper. A really good goalkeeper. He looked, you know, you, you look at him in goal for Man United now. He's about as nervous as Gabby Bonglahor on Countdown or Mastermind. He looks out of his depth and terrified. He looks absolutely rubbish. I just don't get it. I don't get it. He's, he's like, it's like he's allergic to leather. I mean, that, that goal today probably isn't his fault. But if you, if you dare to watch it back, they're very clear, he's very clearly going to be one-on-one. -on -one. 
and I'm looking for my, ge my keeper to just run out, star jump, something. He stood to the left a metre off his goal line. It's the easiest finish that Bayern Munich player will ever have. And how many goals has Anana cost us? I hate to say it. I hate it to be the, I hate it to be the first topic. But in relate, not Premier League. I'm not blaming Anana for the Premier League. That's that's a lot of other reasons. But in the Champions League, that poor lad has cost us the whole group, the whole group, and it was totally and utterly preventable. David De Gea in goal. We're playing Champions League football in February. It's that simple, and that is a question that needs to be asked. I want a journalist to ask that question. Why did you do it, da uh, Eric? Why did you do it? What made you do it? And why was it signed off? And again, I don't want to put it on Ten Hag because I know loads of managers who've, who've asked for a player and a decent director of football has said no. Somebody in that club should have said no. The fact that we did that deal, I, I will never understand it. And it's done exactly what I and many other people were arguing about in March. When David De Gea was being clipped up all the time and people were talking about hips the ball playing goalkeepers, I said, it's not that simple. We don't play out from the back very well anyway. And also changing a Man United goalkeeper has a real tendency to go fucking wrong. And it's gone really wrong. So that's point one. Point two that Ten Hag needs to be asked about. And this is baffling. This is baffling. I'm not going to I'm not going to get the cuddly toy. Why? Why? Why is Scott McTominay playing every fucking game when he's shit? And when I say shit, I mean, I'm angry. But why do we pick Scott McTominay? Why are Manchester United picking a player in the hope that he scores a goal in the penalty box? He does nothing else. We're down to 10 men every time he plays. His passing's terrible. His control's terrible. He doesn't get tackles. He's slow. We're picking a guy... In the Champions League, just in the hope that he'll pop up in the box and score a goal. We did it against Brentford, and I got it. Desperation, throw him on for the last 10 minutes. We're playing with 10 men every game. Why are you not playing a double pivot in the Champions League? Why are you still trying to get McTominay in this team? And I'm baffled by it. I'm absolutely baffled by it. Now, this is coming from somebody that I am not, and, I, and people will go, well, you, you, you're criticising the manager, but you must be Ten Hag out. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. If I, you know, I'm not going to say that. It's, yeah, but look, if I if I go round my grands, which I can't because they're both dead. But if I went round my grands and, um, you know, I say, she says, do you want a cup of tea? I'd love one. And then she puts sour milk in it and sugar. I'm not just going to go, I love you, Gran. I'm going to go, look, I love you, but you put off milk in there and sugar and I don't like either of them uh, so I'm going to tip it down the I'm going to tip it down the toilet and I'm going to make my own she might get a little bit offended but she won't do it again but she'll never do it again now because she's dead but my point is you can criticize people you respect and people you want to stay and not feel bad about it but I don't just because I'm criticizing Ten Hag doesn't mean I want him to lose his job but what I will say is there's accountability. And what I will repeat what I said this morning. I'm going to do your super chats, by the way. We'll go through them all in a couple of minutes. But I just want to get this off my chest. There has to, What I'm saying tonight is there has to be accountability. And what I said last week and what I said this morning is I do, I do not deny that Ten Hag is on the road to getting the sack. An idiot would deny that. I wouldn't sack him. And I stand in that position and I've told you why numerous times. I don't think that any manager in the world changes this. And I think instead of sacking managers, you've got to look at the infrastructure and the playing squad. And those two things have got to change before anything else. And I'll stay by that because I believe in that. But at the same time, there has to be accountability. You cannot go out of a group and you cannot go out of Europe and not say a manager's job is in danger. You have to. We're Manchester United. I put his job in danger, I do, but I wouldn't sack him because I don't think we're at that point yet. But you have to have accountability. Remember what I said this morning, there's five ways, there's five things that need to happen for a manager to get sacked at Manchester United. You lose the fans, you lose the media, you lose the players, you fail to qualify for Europe and you get knocked out of Europe. Now, he has been knocked out of Europe. So, you, you know, you can't just sit here going, 
not Ten Hag's fault. Ten Hag in, Ten Hag in. He's got to be accountable and he has to be on the road to the sack. Otherwise, where are our standards? He's not there yet and I don't want him to be there. But you have to acknowledge he's on the pathway to being sacked because the club will be fucking fuming. Not because of, not, we're, we're fuming because we're embarrassed. We're fuming because the football's not good enough. The club will be fuming because they've just gone and lost about 50 million quid. European football is massive. Euro the Europa League wasn't going to earn us 50 million. It was probably earn us somewhere between 10 and 30, depending how far we go. But it was also another chance to get back into Europe. We're not getting top four this year. We're not getting top four. People are going, wow, not having midweek games mean we, means we can train more. Mate, we ain't, we ain't getting trained to get in the top four this year. We are not getting in the top four. So we're looking at fifth place being enough for the Champions League, which it probably won't be if Newcastle go out tomorrow because we won't get the coefficiency. So we're looking at Europa League football, maybe Conference League football, which is a disaster because you don't earn as much money. I think tonight we've just fucked any chance of being in the Champions League next year. And that's why I'm saying it's cost us 50, 60 million tonight. Because I actually think our best chance of getting in the Champions League was the Europa League. So this is financial crisis for Manchester United. And, and, and anybody who knows anything about the finances of United will know this. This is an absolute catastrophic. Uh, ca uh, ca catastrophic. It's cost us so much money tonight. Because it's not just about not having European football in February. I think we've fucked up the Champions League for next year now. I don't see how we do it because fifth place is only a place in the Champions League because of the coefficients thing. And we're not, England's not doing well in Europe. So it's, um, it, it's absolutely shambolic. I, Jordan has just messaged me, who's on the fan forum, to say, let's take a moment to say you predicted that Man United would win the Champions League. I was pissed. There was a disclaimer in that video. I literally had been down the pub all afternoon and did my season predictions. So that wasn't sober bridge. I was pissed. And I'll tell you what, I was more pissed than I thought predicting that. But look, I wanted to get those two things off my chest because there has to be accountability. Of course there does. Of course there does. Um, and also, um, I think that, you know, where we go from here, it, it, it's terrifying. You know, people start saying we can concentrate on top four now. Have you looked at the league table? We're six points off top four. And we're playing Liverpool on Sunday with no Maguire, no Luke Shaw, no Bruno Fernandes. You know, maybe Rashford and Martial and Lindelof don't fancy it either. Yeah, but it's going to be very interesting to see who's available for Sunday. Because this reminds me now of Ranić at the end of his time, where people were dropping like flies. So who knows who's turning up on Sunday but we all know we're going to get beat. So, look, this... And then you've got West Ham away. And then you've got Aston Villa at home. I mean, look, I, 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 I stand by what I say. We've got to do player ratings, of course. But I stand by what I say that when it comes to Manchester United, right here, right now, I, I will, I'm disappointed, I'm embarrassed, and I am frustrated. But I am not ranting. I think if anybody's ranting tonight, they're a fake. No, that's not fair. That's not fair. That's not fair. That's not fair. Um, you can't judge people for having different emotions to you. But what the reason I'm not ranting is because to rant, you have to you have to be surprised. To be enraged, you've got to be surprised. And I mean, we all knew this was going to be difficult. We all knew we'd fucked it up against Galatasaray and Copenhagen, and we all knew if we didn't get the result tonight, it wasn't tonight. It was the other result. So I'm just disappointed. I'm disappointed about the whole group. Um, I'm looking back to the Galatasaray fucking goals that Anana let in. I'm looking back to Galatasaray at home where they were there for the taking and we couldn't string together two passes. You know, I, th I just think the whole group has been embarrassing. And I have to say as well, you know, smash a like on the video if you agree with me. Bottom line, did we deserve to finish third or second in that group? No. You know, actually... The truth will set you free. We didn't deserve to go through. Copenhagen were better than us. Galatasaray were better than us. And Bayern Munich were better than us. So, you know, again, a very good question to put to the manager of Manchester United. Did, do you think you deserve to go through? And I think you'd have to be honest. And then you've got to say, well, why? Why? Why is your team not capable of beating teams like that. And that's a very big question as well. And to me, games are won and lost in the midfield. And I am I said it before the game. 
this Bruno McTominay and hang out to dry midfielder isn't working. And I actually, I actually think as well, Amrabat today won't get the credit. Underrated, did his job really, really well. Overworked again against very good midfielders. And I thought Amrabat had a very good game and he won't get any credit at all. And I also think that this game in its in isolation, this game will be overhyped into some catastrophically terrible performance. When you look at it, losing 1-0 to Bayern Munich with the team they put out and that team plays together most weeks. And then you look at our team, changes all the time, two injuries in the first half, Rashford and Martial are out, no bench. Losing 1-0 to Bayern Munich, actually, if we'd beaten Galatasaray in Copenhagen, we'd, we'd go, that's fine. And, that, and that's, the, that's the sad thing, isn't it? Losing 1-0 to Bayern Munich tonight, if we'd beaten the other teams, we'd go, it's sort of understandable. We've got players out, but we had to win. And, and, and the result itself, in isolation, I'm not really that bothered about losing to Bayern Munich 1-0. What I am bothered about is the other five games. And that's where we've lost it for me. And I, I'm confused with what, we're going to do against Liverpool at the weekend because I, I'm confused about what he's doing with this midfield. Um, but let's get on with the player ratings. Oh, oh no, before I do the player ratings, I, don't, I just want to make sure that we catch up with some of the super chats, but a little bit of a spoiler for the ploy, uh, player ratings. And, and you can start thinking about this. I'm saying it's time to play Binder in goal. I, I'm going to say that and I'll explain it to you in a way, but I'm saying it's time to drop a Nana and put Binder in goal. And, I, and I'm very strong in that conviction now because it's unacceptable. You know, I, I get back in a player I, I, I and I have said you've got to stick with an honor. You've spent 50 million quid on him. But we're Manchester United and it gets to a point where you've got to put the club before anything. And we can't just keep keep picking a goalkeeper who is not playing well. Um, um, Mass MSS says Van Basten just told you can't blame the players because they can't do better that they're not good enough. Um, LJ says, let's be honest, these owners probably don't even know if we're out of Europe yet. Uh, I'm sorry, financials is one of our reasons to stay in Europe, then we don't deserve it. Uh, we've got to make those 100 million selling, says uh, Tactical Situation. There's also be further ramifications regarding Radcliffe's deal as United are in a worse economic position now, says PQ. Yep. So called hipsters like Beth and Jack Fawcett are responsible for this and aren't a shit show. No, they're not, FIFA crazy. Come on. I said at the start of the show, the people responsible are there for this, and it, and it's a massive decision. You know, I, fans can make bad choices. I've made bad choices as a fan. This is not, you know, Beth's got an opinion. Jack's got an opinion. Many of you had the same opinion. But the bottom line is, I said, as a Man United fan for many years, replacing a goalkeeper that's good for some hipster goalkeeper is a massive mistake. You know, you don't replace a performing goalkeeper at Man United until they're ready to retire because it's very hard to replace them. The What people do not understand about the Man United goalkeeping position is it's not the same as playing for Inter or Ajax or Porto. It's Manchester United. It will swallow you up and, and, and it never really goes well at the start. It didn't go well at the start for De Gea. Um, Ronaldo, De Gea, Pogba, Sancho were never the problem, says Akel. Darren Fletcher and McLaren must love McTominay's passion in practice, hence why he's always playing, says Omar. Look what Bayern got, and Eric Ten Hag wanted Kane and Kim Min Jae, says Robin. Uh, not only an honour, that's a good point. Kim Min Jae was brilliant tonight. Man United should have got him. Ten Hag wanted him. We ended up with Johnny Evans. You've got to look at those things. Uh, you know, you have to. You have to. I said this in the summer as well. You know, I think Ten Hag's accountable tonight. He's on a pathway to getting the sack. I agree. I wouldn't sack him, but I have to acknowledge there are standards. But what did I also say to you in the summer? Remember when the results go bad, why they've gone bad. That summer was a shit show. And I said it in the summer. And Glazers out will become Ten Hag out. And that's not fair. Uh, I look at what we have done now. Not only Anana and McTominay. Why bloody Mount too as well? Yeah, I've forgotten about Mount. You make a good point, Red Devil. We played like we didn't even want to win. But this might be a blessing in disguise, Mark. We'll have more time on the training ground now. Yes and no, as I've already said, uh, Jensen. Jack says, if it wasn't for an honor saving an injury time penalty, United wouldn't have won a group stage match conceding 15 goals in uh, script games uh, is the issue. Uh, don't know what you're on about, Jack. If it wasn't for an honor saving an injury time penalty, United wouldn't have won a group stage match conceding 15 goals in, um, in six group games is the issue. Jack, yeah, you're talking about that penalty save, aren't you, against um, Copenhagen where we won 1-0. Are you aware that he cost us fucking loads of goals in every other game, though? That's the problem. Anana's an easy target, yet attack completely ineffective. No, the, no, mate, you're right. You know, let's bring the Premier League in here 
And Arna's not responsible for the Premier League. I think he's played quite well in the Premier League, but he is responsible for the Champions League. I'm sorry, he's cost us fucking loads. My birthday's on the 26th of December. I pray for results, says Melvin. Eric Ten Hag wanted to sell McTominay, but starting him maybe because of British press. He is the guy who what kept his job and he just can't do being on thin ice, says Anant. Uh, Liam says, honestly, I feel Ten Hag deserves a season without European football. Arteta had it, uh, says Liam. Clayton says, the give a ton and on a time. He's cost us the Champions League and Europe. Other teams are progressing. We are regressing. Rohit says, two Cal is mid. Bayern weren't even trying to create, but we were more worried about the counter. McSauce left Amrabat alone to cover the midfield. Hussein says, Mark, we keep asking why this and why that, and yet no blame is ever on Ten Hag. Well, there is, Hussein. We've spoken about it. Uh, what is enough? When is enough enough, says Mr. MJR. Well, for me, I don't think sacking a manager is the way to go. But I'll tell you what enough is enough for the club. He's already ticked out of Europe. That's going to be a big fucking problem for him. If he doesn't qualify for Europe, that's going to be a big fucking problem for him. If the fans turn on him, he's gone. That he's one he's one of three there because the media are already going to go against him and the players will go against him so Ten Hag at the moment is surviving on the fact that we can still qualify for Europe and the fans are with him they're the two things if they go he, he'll, he'll lose his job he will and I hope they don't go but you know realistically he's 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 ticked a big bad thing tonight um Ten Hag is the problem at this moment in time. His tactics are rubbish, says Kevin. Sack Ten Hag after the impending Liverpool debacle. Well, that's not going to happen, de delicate official. If you think we're sacking Ten Hag after, after a Liverpool loss, you're deluded. We're not sacking the manager when we haven't even sorted out this new ownership thing. It, it won't happen, you know. These players are just average. McTominay plays 90 minutes, his old soul. With Sir Jim coming in, Eric Ten Hag will have to win the FA Cup. If he ends up sixth or without the FA Cup, he'll have to finish in the top four, says uh, Dariel. Uh, Bayern can do something United can't do and that's find space with the ball, uh, says 619. And the Ripper says, here's some good news. Shitty night, no doubt. Here's 50 more memberships. Happy Christmas to all of you, says the Ripper. Thank you very much, Ripper. You're a legend. A bit of news, a bit of good news in the community. We're, we're in it together, aren't we? That's always that's always the way, unfortunately. Um, well, it's fortunate we're in it together, but it's fucking horrible, this. Sean Thurston says, Martial and Rashford out ill. The rats are the first to jump from a sinking ship. Get these players out. Well, look, Sean, I do want to talk about that. Um, uh, De, Glue, De, Her De Gea knocked us out of Europe. I'm not talking about that, Red Dev. I mean, you know, you're going back into the past. You're not answering my question. De Gea was more than reliable goalkeeper than Anana, and it's cost £100 million replacing him. It's a fuck up. Face it. Spend £50 million on Anana for him to cost us European football, says Scott. And uh, my God, that was grim. We could genuinely be in the Conference League, says Will. The Conference League might be a fucking bonus at the moment, Will. Mark Anana was always me mediocre. Ajax is a three-team league. Serie A is defending galore. Goalkeeper has nothing to do with it. Leagues masked his last lack of ability. There we go. Right, let's do the player ratings. Uh, let's do these player ratings. So mark every player out of 10, six being the average, and uh, you can do it through the link in the description if you want to get involved. But look, I want to say this from the very off. From the very off, I'm going to say this. I would I would drop him for Beinder. Um, I think there has to be, a, you know, I said it at the start of the stream. Whether you're Marcus Rashford, Bruno Fernandes, Scott McTominay, Harry Maguire, Luke Shaw, Raphael Varane, there has to be accountability. If Varane has taken a pop at Ten Hag in training and he's been out of the team for a month because of it, good. There has to be accountability. If Jadon Sancho puts a tweet out publicly berating the manager and the coaches, good. You've got to apologise. There has to be accountability. There has to be accountability. And there also has to be accountability when a goalkeeper is costing you games. We've got another goalkeeper. He's, you know, what's he gonna? What's an honor gonna do now? I'm not playing for my country because I don't want to lose my place in January. Come on, he's got, he's got to be taken out of the team. The same way Rashford got taken out of the team, he's got to go out of the team. I, I've got no confidence in him. What, what he's done in the Champions League hasn't been good, but his positional sense last week against Palmer's goal and tonight, he's not in the right positions. He's got to go back to basics. This is just going to cost us more games. So I would change the goalkeeper. I think it's time to do it. Um, look, I actually thought his ball play distribution with the ball today was quite good. He looked quite confident. But he's let himself down by just standing there a metre off his line and not charging out and not being central. I, you know, to go from David De Gea to what we've got at the moment is, 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 is a massive drop off and it's a four for me. 
Uh, the low at right back thought he did okay. At left back, he fell apart. I mean, this is what I mean about injuries. It's not just Luke Shaw and Maguire getting injured. There's a good relationship between, and, and listen to this, like Ricky, listen to this. You've got a good relationship between Delo and Anthony. Luke Shaw goes off. Delo goes to left back. Delo goes shit. Anthony goes shit. I said this. I've been saying this for a week. Delo and Anthony work well together. Whether you like it or not, they've got a relationship and it works. Wan Bissaka and Anthony don't, and Delo at left back doesn't. And it, and you know this is it. You know, and that's injury related. So I'd give him a five. Uh, Maguire before he went off six did nothing wrong. Absolutely happy with him. Just an injury. Uh, Varane for me was a six point five. My man of the match. Uh, actually, I thought he was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. You know, he's our best centre back. I'm glad he's back in the team. Hopefully, he can stay fit. Don't know what the problem was, but there you go. Mojo says 50 million spent on Anana could easily have been spent on a good centre back. Yeah, it was a mistake. It was a big fucking mistake. Saifu says, does Nice being in second place mean that the only option that we have to get into Europe next year is finishing first, or do I have my facts wrong? It, it, under the current rules, we're fucked, yeah. And do you blame Ten Hag for the injuries, or do you think another can work with the tools he's given, says Massacre? No, I think I think the injury, you know, if you want to know about the injury crisis in football at the moment, I did a very good video on That's Football today explaining it. There is a massive increase in injuries this season across the board. It's a massive increase. And obviously, it's an issue for us as well. Don't fall into the trap of these leaks from the dressing room that they don't like having to work hard. I saw people in the watch along saying, we keep getting injuries because Ten Hag's running them too hard. I never, ever in my whole life as a football fan thought I would see other football fans defending lazy bastard, overpaid Man United players because they're being trained too hard. Fuck off. I ain't sticking up for these players because they're having to work hard in training. That's not why they're getting injured. They're getting injured because we had a World Cup last year and we played three games a week from December until the start of June. And most of our players had a two-week break and then a hard pre-season and a hard season. They're playing too many games with too many minutes added on and that's why everybody is getting injuries. And also, that's exactly why in the summer we should have had a better fucking summer transfer window because as per usual, we sat on our arse, we lost the likes of Kim Min Jae, we bring people like Johnny Evans in, we don't do an Amrabat deal until the end of August. Rasmus came in late as well. It was a shit show. And that's why we're suffering. Anana is what happens when you scream back the manager, Mark. If Ten Hag wasn't allowed Anana uh, by the board, you would have kicked off and said he's been hampered. No, I wouldn't, James, because I didn't want Anana and you're rewriting history. Ten Hag stays. The players should go. All of them. Get rid of them. I don't think there is any other way. The club is rotten because of these players, says Mohamed. Mark, Eric wanted Anana with Martinez, Varane, Casemiro. With injuries, everything went out the window, says Mohamed. And Mojo was gifted 10 memberships. Well, look, I'm not saying sack the manager. I'm saying... Um, what I'm saying is, um, I'm saying that the, the situation is a shit show. I'm saying he's on the road to being sacked. I'm saying that those people who want him sacked may well get what they want. Um, I'm saying that sacking a manager yet again is not the answer. But I'm not in charge of the football club. Playing this bad when an ownership structural change is happening is the worst timing ever. Jim would see Eric Ten Hag dismissal as part of a new beginning. Says T. Look, new owners... Sacking a manager. <laughs> How many times has that happened? A lot. Uh, Luke Shaw was off tonight. Maybe he was carrying an injury coming into the game. I think uh, Kingsley Coman had him on toast a few times. He looked way off the pace. He looked way off the pace at the weekend. I've seen some horrible things said about players ducking Liverpool. Um, there's no way in a million years that Harry Maguire is ducking Liverpool. He's not that type of player. He might have played shit against Liverpool, but he, he's not ducking Liverpool. Um... Look, I don't. You know, people will say it about Martial. They'll say it about Rashford. Let's see if they're back. I, I look that there is toxicity in that dressing room. But let's not get silly about saying people are getting injured on purpose. I, I don't think we can prove that. For um, uh, I think I think he played well. Six point five. I think he played well. I think you're you're giving him a low score because you're angry. But I think Amrabat and Varane played well. We lost one nil to Bayern Munich. We didn't lose ten nil. We've lost one nil to Bayern Munich. Over a 90-minute game, they're a really good team. And let's be realistic, you can't give everybody a four because we lost 1-0 to Bayern Munich. I thought Varane and Amrabat played well. This guy, I don't get it. Three, I just do not get it. And that's on Ten Hag. It's not even on McTominay. That's on Ten Hag. Why does he keep doing it? He's been playing him every week since Brentford. And the only game he's played well was Chelsea. And yet he plays him every fucking week. 
And why did he play against che well against Chelsea? He scored two goals. When does he ever play well when he doesn't score a goal? That's all he's got. A goal. Man United cannot be picking players on one attribute. You've got to be multi-skilled. And unfortunately, Scott McTominay should be on the bench for a game when you're losing 1-0 to Brentford and you throw him on, he scores you a couple of goals. That's what he should be. You know, he's not even as good as Solskjaer, but at least we use Solskjaer for that. He should be on the bench for the last 20 minutes if we need it. And we're starting him. And he hasn't got the attributes. He can't run. He can't dribble. He can't tackle. He can't pass. He can't create. He's a goal scorer in the box. You don't play someone like that for 90 minutes every game. He's got one attribute. Why? It's not his fault. I'm not blaming the player. He, you know, Scooby-Doo, he runs around. He cares about the football club. That's not in doubt. But he hasn't got the attributes to start. That's on the manager. Bruno, disappointing. You know what? I said this on the live show last night. For Christmas, I would get Bruno Fernandes a pair of pants where if he goes out of position, he gets an electric shock right on his arse. Because that's the problem with Bruno Fernandes. He's running around everywhere. Everywhere. And it, and it's to the detriment of to the team. And it's the, to the detriment of himself. You know, it, it's true. You know it's true. It's, it, he's just running around everywhere. And, it, and it's destroying his game. Destroying it. Anthony in the first half was good. As soon as Delo came off, he went bad. Five. Um, Ganacho had uh, he struggled tonight. Ganacho struggled. Lamar dealt with him very, very well in the second half. He pocketed him. Let's be honest. Uh, five. Uh, Rasmus really struggled as well. Five. Um, look, he's twenty years of age. There's nobody else. You've got Joe Hugel on the bench. Again, this is about recruitment. This is about infrastructure. How have Man United ended up in a situation where Three years ago, or two years ago, or 18 months ago, we had Ronaldo, Cavani, Anthony Martial. We've now got Rasmus Hoyland. You know, how have Man United taken a step backward? And, and I like Rasmus, but he's 20. 20, and he was never the finished article. He was always going to be nurture, work in progress talent. And we're relying on him to get the goals from Man United. Um... Vengeance says you may have stopped playing EAFC, but the ghost embarrassment is not leaving us anytime soon. Uh, Mark, is, the, uh, is this the end of Ten Hag? No, Oliver, no. An artist's story is the definition of fall from grace, from being a key player in Inter's road to the final to being a key player in United's derailment. Look, FaZe, Anana is a victim, but I knew he would be. He is a victim of the Man United goalkeeping curse. Schmeichel went, Bosnich was a good goalkeeper, swallowed him up. Bartes was a good goalkeeper, swallowed him up. Other goalkeepers came in and failed until we got Van der Sar, who had the personality and mentality and ability to take on that big shirt. Speak to Ben Foster about it. He knows. He's, he's been at Man United. Thomas Kuszek, Tim Howard. De Gea came in, didn't do well at the start, nowhere near as bad as this. We never should have done what we did. Anana at the moment looks to me like a Bartes, a Bosnich, you know, a good goalkeeper that is completely getting swallowed up by the enormity of the Man United shirt. It's not for everybody. And I said this before and people didn't want to listen. People thought being a hipster goalkeeper at Inter Milan or Porto or wherever or AC Milan meant that you could just put a Man United shirt on and express yourself. And it's not like that. It's it's a there's there's more to being a Man United goalkeeper than just being a good goalkeeper. You, it's it's a mentality. It's a it's the right fit or it's the wrong fit. And 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 to take that risk, I don't I do blame Ten Hag. I do I don't blame Anana. He's just a goalkeeper trying to make a living. But I, what I really blame is how the fuck did somebody at Man United not know this? How the fuck did they not tell him about this? You would have told him. Has anyone asked for Sir Alex's opinion as to what he needs to be done? Well, you know, actually, one name that instantly came to mind was Sir Alex Ferguson. You know, maybe somebody should have got Ten Hag to speak to Sir Alex about replacing the goalie. Because there's no way. I mean, I've never met Sir Alex Ferguson. And I don't know what he'd say on this. But there's no way in a million years Sir Alex Ferguson would have said, I think it's a good idea to get rid of De Gea for an honour. He wouldn't have done it. Never in a million years. He'd have said... I'd keep the hair for another year because it's stable 
I'd keep De Gea. I think you need to look at other areas and De Gea will, will keep you... He'll, he'll save you so many shots a year. He'll win you so many games a year. I, I wouldn't do it. We've replaced a goalkeeper that wins you games every year for a goalkeeper that quite factually has knocked us out of Europe because of his mistakes. And and, and nobody can argue that. And Arno can't argue that. Ten Hag can't argue that. I can't argue that. You can't argue that. The bottom line is, we know for a fact that if he hadn't replaced De Gea, we wouldn't be out of Europe. And people, you can try and argue against it, but it's true. It, it is true. And whoever made that decision or the people in that decision have got to take a long, hard look at themselves because it's cost us 100 million quid. Um, Ali says, you called Anana a transformative signing and really good in your announcement video. Sorry you can't say you didn't want him. Uh, I can, Ali, because you clearly are not listening to what, what was said. Um, for months, I didn't want this to happen and they did it. I also did a video a week or two before saying they've absolutely kicked De Gea in the teeth. But you know what, mate? I support Manchester United. I support this manager and I'll support a new signing. I'm not going to say there in a video... He's a bag of shit. I don't want him. Like, you have to look at the positives. You have to, you have to, you have to, in my opinion, get behind the signing. It's not his fault. I thought he was a good goalkeeper. I've said that before. I thought he was a good goalkeeper. My concerns have come true about the enormity of the job. But he he, he should have been a transformative goalkeeper. You know, even if you don't know much about Anana, and I did, he should have been a transformative goalkeeper for Manchester United. Like, he should have been. I don't dispute anything I said in that video because that's what he should have been. But don't try and label me as somebody that wanted to replace De Gea because I will absolutely argue it to my last breath. I didn't. I'll find you the clips. I didn't want it to happen. And I would never have done it. Never would have done it. Um, Carl, welcome to Members Club. Not an excuse, but Anana was faked out by uh, Komen. It looked like he was going to hit it the first time. Then he finished after. That's why he was standing on the left and took a step back. But he, Pedro, he should have been coming forward. That's the problem. He, he, he's too static. He should have still been moving forward whether Anana was going to take the shot or not. He, he plants his feet too... Yeah, he's, he's not moving enough. He's not moving enough. We see it all the time. Um, I, I, believe he's in a, I do believe he's a victim though because, you know, he's been thrown into it. Johnny Evans did all right. Give him a six. wan Basaka probably a 5.5. Palestri didn't really notice him, so I'll give him a six. 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 <sighs> Yeah, I think that's about right. I mean, I've mentioned why McTominay, the goalkeeping thing, the, the overall group as well. We're out of Europe. We've not yet. Yeah, we've you can yeah. By Munich, we've lost, but you've also got to look at the whole group. We're out of Europe. Not acceptable. Not acceptable. Uh, not acceptable at all. I didn't forget Bruno. I'm sure I did Bruno. Yeah, I did. No, I didn't. Uh, oh, Bruno today. I was talking about Bruno. Yeah, five. Four doesn't really matter. Uh, man of the match, Raphael Varane, forty-six percent of the vote. Uh, Amrabat, twenty-seven percent of the vote, and then loads of lower ones on that. Look, I think Varane and Amrabat were the positives today, um, but the, then that's not going to overshadow the fact that the big massive. The, the, look, I've said it all. I've said it all. Be very interested to watch the forum. I'm going to go and watch the forum now. Um, very interested to say what they've got to say on this because everyone's going to have a different opinion. I've said everything I need to say. I'm just going to go over old ground, going back at it again. Um, let's go over to the forum and see what they've got to say. Massively disappointed. Um, big accountability. And Ten Hag has definitely ticked off one big thing to get himself sacked. Um, and he's got to own up to it. He's he's putting himself on thin ice. I'll back him. I don't think sacking the manager is the way to go. We've done it so many times before. I don't think it's the way to go. The club's a mess from top to bottom. Why should a manager go when players need to go, when the infrastructure needs to go? I'll stay, I'll stay, I'll stick with that tune. But what I will say to the Ten Hag outers is I'm not gonna not acknowledge that that's unacceptable. And I'm not gonna not acknowledge that he's ticked a massive reason to sack him tonight. Not the reason, but there's four or five reasons to get sacked and he's ticked a big one tonight. Getting knocked out of Europe before Christmas is fucking embarrassing. I don't I don't think we've even done that in the last 10 years. As bad as we've been, I don't think we've been knocked out of Europe completely in the last 10 years ever at this stage. So anyway, let's see what they've got to say on the fan forum. Thanks everyone for watching. It's another tough night as a Man United fan, but we stick together. Let's see what they've got to say on the fan forum.